She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Lies, lies, lies. We tell ourselves lies almost every single day. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show, the show where we tackle and even go toe to toe with the status quo of success. Why? You have a calling on your life, my friend, and there are things that are stopping you from reaching your destiny. And here on The Danny Johnson Show, we reveal some of those inhibitors as well as give you building blocks and build bridges to where you have much more success, a more fulfilled life, a more satisfied life, a life that is much more abundantly and worth living, even a purposed filled life instead of a life that is just meandering here and there and going to and fro. Come on, I grew up on welfare, pregnant at 17, homeless at 21, but millionaire by 23. Today, a multimillionaire, 100% of my profits from my company goes straight to taking care of the poor after, of course, the expenses of taking care of a staff is done. So look, you can live a purpose-filled life. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter even what the journey has looked like. What matters is what you do today and from this day forward. So when I say that there's lies that we tell ourselves, there's, there's, there's actually belief systems that we have that cause us to bring frustration into our lives. There are belief systems that have been brought in by lies that others have said to us, that others have lived, and other lies that we have come up all by ourselves. You know, like what? Well, you might lie to yourself every day. I have a couple of them written down here. I wanted to share them with you. Okay, for example, we tell ourselves this all the time. Um, I'm gonna wake up early and go to the gym. No, you're not, okay? I don't need to write it down because I will totally remember. Uh, Lie. Uh, I'm just gonna hit the snooze button just once lie. <laughs> the bottom line is that lies can be so destruction and we're setting ourselves up for failure instead of setting ourselves up for success. You see, a real decision is followed by action. But when you just kind of flippantly say, oh, I'm going to do this and you had no, you made no decision to do it. You did not back that decision with, with a plan, a proper plan of action. If you, if you have continuously set yourself up for failure, today is the day that that has to stop. We have to identify some of the things, some of the time wasters, some of the destructive habits that we have that are hurting our earning potential and hurting relationships at home, as well as stopping us from reaching our full potential. So I've got a question for you. What kind of lies are you telling yourself? What things have you said? And by the way, the definition of, a, of an excuse is a well-planned lie. Do you give excuses? Is there someone else to blame for the situation that you're in? No, but Danny, really, really, it really is this. There is always a solution. But sometimes you got to attack the lies and the beliefs that you have in your head to find out why are you thinking the way that you're thinking? Why are you approaching the thing that you're approaching the way you're approaching it? Is it getting the result that you want? Is the busyness that you're doing in an activity the best way to go about it? Is it actually producing? Is busyness producing? I had a conversation just yesterday with, um, with a client who uh, was saying, yeah, you know, I, I have to catch up on email, you know, somewhere around uh, midnight because, you know, I get interrupted so much throughout the day, you know, and I feel like I really need to put in my eight hours, you know, I want to be, I want to have integrity, I want to be ethically solid, so if I'm getting interrupted 15 times in the day and people are coming to my office throughout the whole day, well then I, you know, I'm not putting in my eight hours, I'm not giving my solid people of excellence into work. So I have to bring my computer home so I can do email at night. Whoo! Well, the question I had for this individual was, okay, um, so why did you teach everyone that it was okay for them to interrupt you throughout the day? Well, I'm trying to be nice, you know, I'm trying to be cordial. I certainly don't want to give them a look of like, I'm working, please leave me alone. There is more than one way to skin a cat. You've heard me say that before here on the show. That I've learned that 19 years ago. It was one of the best things that I needed to hear at the time when I heard it from a multimillionaire. And that's what he said. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Sometimes we get ourselves fixated on something 
and we hold to it. We defend that position. We we we're not gonna let go of this thing. Or it's like it's our life, you know, that we're that there's a tsunami happening. We're holding on to a palm tree, you know, as here comes the wave, there's the wind. I mean, wow, you know, we're holding on, we're holding on. There's more than one way to skin a cat. We're gonna find some solutions today together to shore up this busyness that is not producing results. Because at the end of the day, what gets us paid in the marketplace? At the end of the day, what causes us to uh, generate an income? And if we wanna generate more income, then that means we're gonna have to get rid of busyness in life and start focusing more on the result that we're after because sometimes perfection does not produce results. And so in the case of, of this client who, you know, she's putting in extra long days because I have to perfectly get at least eight hours worth of work in, there's another way to do it. In fact, let me give you the suggestion I gave her. I said, put earbuds in your ears and it will look like you're on the phone. Even if you wanna have a headset that has a boom mic, because you often are on the phone. You have a headset with a boom mic, have your phone right there on your desk. You could be listening to music as you're working. Someone walks by, you just smile and wave and keep doing what you're doing. You could be listening to somebody else on the phone or you could be typing, you know, typing out notes while you're on the phone, but just show yourself to be productive. It doesn't mean that you are gonna ignore people. Smile and keep going. That shows them that you are not open and available for a, what was supposed to be a 15 second chit chat that turned into a 15 minute chit chat and then you're completely off task, you're, fit, you're, you're unfocused, you now are distracted in other things and you know, boom, there you go. So there's one quick little tip of what you could do today to help less busyness and more production because you get paid for producing, you don't get paid for excuses. All right, so Jerry Lindsay from Knoxville, Tennessee, come on, what kind of lies, what kind of excuses, what kind of things are stopping you for being more productive in life, Jerry? Oh, exactly the same thing that you just went over, Miss. Did really? Uh, oh, yeah. Nailed it on the head, and I was just like, but those are things that I've had to learn how to stop. But the biggest thing that stops me is um, I want to help everyone. I want to help yeah. everyone else, and I always want to take on their problems. And it's so hard for me to remember that, hey, I have a goal, I have a purpose, I've got to take care of me to eventually be able to help others out. Well, but and then in that goal and in that purpose, you have responsibilities to other individuals and commitments that you've made to other people. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. has to be part of this equation here. There's a, there's a job that you're required to do, and there's a certain amount of time that you're required to do it in. And if, if we're being, because we can be pulled, right? We can be pulled in a thousand different directions. There's, there's so much pain and suffering in the world. There's so many people that we feel like we can help. But at the same time, if we deny our responsibilities and we're not using wisdom, because it's emotion that pulls us to want to solve everybody else's problems at work, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and some of it is ego, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tell me how. Sometimes I'm sorry, what was that? Tell me how it's ego sometimes. Oh, I'm, because if we can fix one little problem, then, like for me, if one person were to come to me for advice about a particular situation, maybe, I can't help but to want to fix that problem altogether because that's the control freak in me. <laughs> and like you mentioned earlier, perfection doesn't always produce results. Yeah. You know, I don't have to fix every little thing. It's okay to share my knowledge and the things that I've learned with others and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I don't actually have to go in and fix their problems for them because then that just puts me behind on everything that I've done mm -hmm. and therefore I've let others down on the duties and responsibilities that I've taken upon myself and so forth and so forth. Yeah. Okay, so even let's look at it. Okay, Sally comes over to you and she's like, me, I have this problem. <laughs> yeah, can we talk for a few minutes? <laughs> right? She comes We all know Sally. <laughs> We really do. <laughs> okay. And maybe it's not Sally. Maybe it's someone that you really enjoy working with and it's someone that you enjoy talking to. You know what I mean? And and it's someone that you yeah. really gel with. I think those are some of the bigger distractors, honestly. It's not just Sally, but I think it's also the one that you like love conversing with and love solving problems with. But the reality is, is that what could be said in that moment when they're interrupting a task that you're doing? What could be said? What could be done right there? That rather than oh, stopping your task and putting your focus on that person, tell me, what's another way to solve that problem? It's all, I've learned that it's always okay if someone comes up to me, and even if they politely 
you know, trying to excuse what they're doing. Um, it's always okay to take those few extra seconds to finish up what you're doing and then just, you know, politely tell them. I mean, it's it's not the end of the world. And, and yeah, I've learned that some people will get upset and think that, hey, well, so-and-so's mad and whatever. Well, first of all, stop wearing your feelings on your sleeve. We're here together to get a job done. You know, and, and always later on you can address that situation. You know, hey, I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just trying to focus yeah. and, and get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. M- m- let's be honest, most of the time it's about something that isn't work-related or, not, well, in my personal experience, it's, it's <laughs> always, you know, wanting to catch up about something or the weekend mm-hmm. or a problem or, so, um, definitely what? I've had to learn that the hard way, but yeah. it, you know, it works. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, I find it very interesting how many people, you said you wear their emotions on their sleeve. It's more like they wear their third grade emotions on their sleeve. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. It's more like the third. Absolutely. You know, they're not my friend anymore. They're not paying attention to me. You know, right. they're not recognizing me enough. You're like, grow up or go back to school, to the third right. grade, so you can learn how to grow it. Because this is the workplace, and you need to be in a mature adult. You are a mature. You are an adult. Now it's time to mature. And uh, hello, we're here to work. We're not here to socialize. We're not here to talk about how the weekend went. We're not here to talk about some problem I had with my spouse over the weekend. It, this is not the appropriate place for that. Okay, so I think you've done a really good job, and I love that you brought this to the light. I think also what I would say is that, uh, yes, take a few minutes uh, to finish up the task, but it's more importantly, I don't know, I might try the earbud thing. <laughs> I might try the earbud thing uh, and, and just simply smile and just go, sorry, I got to keep going. You know what I mean? And just make it funny about it. You know, as long as it's done with a smile and then it could be, you know what? I'd love to talk to you. Um, what time is your break? Do you have a break at 1245? Let's meet in the, in the, you know, in the lunchroom at 1245 and then let's talk. It, it's, it's okay to put it to a different time. You know, uh, we're supposed to have breaks throughout the day, according to, you know, laws, labor laws, and people can take those breaks. I think it's important for people to take those breaks. It's it's terrible when they don't, because when they don't take breaks, they don't get their brain refreshed. When you don't get your brain refreshed, you now are you have less patience. You have less endurance. You have less of a clear mind when you don't take those 15 minute breaks or that hour lunch break. And so it's really simple to say, hey, I'd love to talk to you. I gotta, I, I'm on a deadline, gotta finish this. What time is your next break? All right, cool. My break is at the same time. Let's meet in the lunchroom. Bam, done. Chances are they probably forgot about it or you have that limited time right there and then it's back to work. And you're still the nice guy. You're still able to help them. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more solutions to those work problems right after this. There's one thing holding you back from being your most productive at work. Do you know what it is? Find out next on The Danny Johnson Show. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. I am so far behind, but it's okay. I'll eventually catch up. There's another lie that we have a tendency of telling ourselves, and then we end up in, yes, that place of being overwhelmed and feeling like, ay, yeah, yeah, there's too much to do. I'm so far behind. I will never catch up. You know, you don't ever want to put yourself in a cycle that never ends, and so many people do. The busyness of life, the busyness at work doesn't necessarily produce results, and we have got to become a people that if we want to be successful, we have got to become a people that is focused on producing results in the quickest, shortest fashion possible. In the quickest, shortest fashion 
possible that gets the results. I used to be that person that was all about perfection and perfection was killing me, choking out the creativity in me, choking out life out of me versus focus on the result. Get the thing done. It doesn't mean get it done sloppy. It means get it done and get results. And if we focus on that, we're going to increase our value out there into the marketplace. So what is stopping you? What kind of things seem to be hindering you from the kind of success that it is that you want? What do you do when you are behind? What things are causing you to be behind and get sucked up in busyness and not producing the results that you want? Joining me now is Leanne Fraser from Ontario, Canada. Leanne, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Hello, Danny. Hi. So what about you, Leanne? What is hindering you? What things are stopping you from producing results, but instead producing busyness? Um, a combination of many things. One is my family, money, and health. Okay, Leanne, what do you mean your family is stopping you from producing results? Um, well, I've been having a like a lot of issues with um, how they're, you know, they're having a bad day and then I'm starting to have boundaries where I'm not getting sucked into that because I've got to get a schedule going. And that's the part where um, I can't take on everybody's problems. They've got to figure it out for themselves. Yeah, and you know what you'll find is when you let people figure their stuff out, they seem to do a pretty good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> And they like their own solution they came up with because, you know, when you give them a solution, they didn't listen to it anyway, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which means you wasted time. Wasted time giving someone a solution that isn't going to follow the solution. That doesn't quite produce results. That produces busyness. So, Leanne, the main thing I think I'm going to say to you is that you gave me three excuses. There's three excuses as to why you're not producing as much as you want to. Number one you said was family. What's your choice for your family to be your distractor? Or it's your choice to let them handle their own stuff. You, when you're with your family, be with your family. But when you are working, you need to work wholeheartedly with excellence and diligence and leave that thing in a different compartment and you come to work and you get your job done. Okay, uh, how, uh, for health and finances. Now, are you 100% control into what you put into your mouth? Yes, I am. You are. Okay, and are there certain foods that you might want to stay away from that causes bad health? You know, you, there are a list of foods out there that cause bad health, right? Yes. Right, and there's, there's a list of foods that actually cause pain in the body too, right? Swelling and pain and disease, right? That's right. Okay, and so who's in control of your hand that holds the food and your mouth? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so we solved the health problem, didn't we? Okay. And then finances. Okay, finances. Who's in complete control of who spends something? Who's in charge of Leanne's spendings? Money. I am. You are? Like no one has a gun to your head saying use That's the right. credit card to <laughs> buy X. No? There's no gun to your head? Well, if you're talking about credit card people or stuff like that, then but they have no control over what I do. Meaning you, who has control over Leanne's spending? Me. You do. So you have control of your own spending, you have control over what goes in your mouth, and you have control over what kind of drama you get involved in with your family, right? Right. Right. That means you're in control of your own life. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else can be used as an excuse for the finances, the health, or the family. It's you and how you choose to approach it. So I, if I were you, uh, I would definitely leave the family in the family compartment. When you're with them, go ahead, be about them, love on them, encourage them. Done with that, now I'm working. And now I'm gonna work with excellence and diligence. I'm gonna be wise with the money that I'm not going to spend on foolish things. And as far as health goes, I'm gonna every day prepare my body so that it works optimally. So my emotions are strong and not weak, so I can think more clearly. Sodas make you think bad. Sugar hurts you. Good fruits and vegetables, awesome. This is Danny Johnson, we'll continue with more after this. What multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? 
There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. It's the Danny Johnson Show. I know I'm slammed already, Danny, but I will eventually be able to get it done. I'll put in some extra hours to get it done. Lie. <laughs> Come on, what is that actually producing? Have you said yes to too many things? Have you stretched yourself too thin? Have you then caused yourself to get stressed out? I was in a conversation yesterday with somebody who was in the same exact situation and food seems to be her stress reliever. It used to be alcohol, but now it's sugar <laughs> and carbohydrates. And she's like, I have got to kill this. I have to stop this. But stress is the thing that makes me cause, it causes me to go eat these things. And I said, well, I think the important thing is to cause the reason for the stress. Oh, I already know what that is. I don't know if you know what that is. Because stress doesn't happen when you're stressed. Stress actually is created way before. It's a bunch of little decisions that happen way before the fruit of stress has showed up in your life. You got to look at that because stress is an inhibitor to your earning power. Stress is an inhibitor. It's a roadblock to a fruitful, harmonious, passionate marriage. Stress and being under the pressure and, uh, and, and slavery of stress, it truly is something that actually takes years off of your life, no joke. They have done studies, the medical community has done studies to, and have proven that stress causes heart attacks, it can cause cancer, stress can cause strokes, Stress literally takes years off of your life. And, and, you, and if you find yourself to be someone that is dealing with stress and you're slammed and you're behind and I'll just put more hours and I'll get it done, hold on a second. You gotta look at what caused that. Did you say yes to things that you should not have? Have you spread yourself too thin? Have you, uh, made, have you, com have you over committed to things? Did you miscalculate what you were committing to? Did you misinterpret what you were committing to? Is what somebody has asked for you, that task that needs to be done, is your expectation different than what actually needs to be done? Have they given you five steps and you added an extra five on top of it? I've worked with somebody in the past where they love to overcomplicate things. I've worked really hard with her for years of undercomplicating, like take things very, make things simple, 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 simple. It's simplicity that gets results. It is not this, you know, I'm going to do 10 steps instead of five steps because that shows that I'm, you know, I'm going the extra mile. Not necessarily the truth. We want to under. Uh, we want to, yes, under promise and over deliver, not over commit and say yes to too many things. So, but what about you? What are some things that are stopping you from becoming more productive? That's the question I have for you right now. So we're going to the phones. We got Linda from Ocean City, New Jersey. Linda, what about you? What do you feel is stopping you from producing the results that you desire? Hi, Danny. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, you were just saying all those things, what's holding you back, and my answer is yes, yes, yes. I'm just nodding my head. Yes, <laughs> I've got a whole page of things here. Like, of course, that's the perfectionism mm -hmm. that is so huge for me. And I'm not seeing it. It's in me, but I'm also now seeing it in my daughter, which hurts me oh. so much. Oh, baby doll. Um, Linda, tell me why that hurts you that you see that in your daughter. She, the frustration yeah. that she goes through with not being able to get things perfect, mm -hmm. and I'm, I can see it in my, me and my business, and it hinders me from picking up the phone and making the connections when I have so many people waiting yep. for my phone call. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I, I keep myself overwhelmed. Yep. Um, the focus has been a problem. Mm -hmm. I use all the, the excuses, it's my marriage, it's where I live, it's maybe if I get a new house, a new headset, more leads, more training, <laughs> it'll be different tomorrow. Um, I get ready to get ready. It, it takes me two hours to get the perfect position in the chair. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
You know, and I, I am in such a rut. And I, it's gotten to the point where the guilt from putting yes. my business on the back burner and being in this hamster wheel is is just, it's, it's painful. Because, yes. you know, my husband, he drives a rig. He's gone all the time. Mm-hmm. And he's supportive of my business. But, wow. you know, to be able to bring him home out of the truck and... I don't know. <laughs> okay, so listen, Linda, I, I, I'm going to use something that you said to help okay. bring you to a place of breakthrough. You said you see the same thing in your daughter. Where do you think she's learning it from? Me. So when you said it pains you to see it in your daughter, why does it pain you to see it in your daughter? I it's because it's painful for me. What is painful for you? Yeah, the what angst, is the pain? The angst of trying to strive for perfection and never getting it. Yeah. And it's because I know it's a hindrance to my success. Yeah. And I don't want that to be a hindrance for her. But you realize that's what you're teaching her. Yes. Where did you learn how to do this? <laughs> so perfectly. <laughs> I so perfectly? My perfect teacher? <laughs> Were your mom or dad like this? I don't think that they were. It that's uh, maybe it was my striving to please them. Did you feel that you could them. not please them? I don't think that I have was pleasing to my parents. Okay. <laughs> at all. But I had wanted to be, I, you know, being daddy's little girl kind of thing and and I am the black sheep. I'm not the the college graduate and have dealt with addictions and, and mm. things like that as well. Okay. And I'm almost feeling as though I'm addicted to the disappointment that I put myself through. Ooh, girlfriend. That somehow in a, in a sick and twisted way, that the pain that you keep beating yourself up with because of past mistakes that you've made, mm-hmm. it's like due to you. Mm-hmm. That somehow you have to suffer because of the mistakes that you've made in your past. Probably reflective in all, in this in a big way. I went through something with I've had eating disorders as well, and the things that I would tell myself in the past was very undeserving. Like what? As far as food went, in order to lose the weight that I mm-hmm. wanted to lose, and I think that that I was, and I realized this yesterday as I was talking to my daughter that you know I don't deserve could be I don't deserve love, I don't deserve success, I don't deserve food. I, You know, all those things that I programmed into my subconscious years ago. Yes, yes. Okay, so when you say that you always wanted to be daddy's little girl and you never felt like you were, were your parents critical? Yes, I think so. Uh, No, I need an answer. Is it yes or no? Not an I think. Okay. Yes. So mom and dad, they loved you, but you felt that they were critical. How were they critical? What would they say to you? It was always corrective criticism as it was was told to me. Give Um, me an example. You're not thin enough. Ooh. Keep going. My mom would have said, you, I'll give you a dollar for every pound you lose. <laughs> that was painful. You don't deserve to be happy. Um, that was a biggie. Uh, getting the grades to get into college because that was important. Why did your I, mom want you to be that, thin? That, that I was very, I was musical, and I, I guess maybe they didn't support me in, in that. How? How did they not support you in music? Just the positive reinforcement that it, maybe I was needing. Meaning you because didn't get so any positive reinforcement? Pardon me? You didn't get any positive reinforcement about your gifting? It was financial. They would pay for the instruction and things like that. But emotionally, no. Gotcha. So basically, um, you felt like uh, you weren't perfect. Exactly. And you weren't good enough. Exactly. And you weren't thin enough. No way. (laughs) So you've been striving for how many years to be perfect enough, thin enough, smart enough, good enough? More than I'd like to admit. At least. 30, mm-hmm. 35. How, how many more years do you want to do that? Zero. Are you sure? Then then where, where am I going to get my feeling of, oh, okay, I don't deserve and I'm disappointed and now I feel a lot better because I've, I'm feeling disappointed. Yep. 
I really, this is bad. <laughs> I used to do the same thing, Linda. I, I used to live the exact same way. I had the same exact cycle. This is a cycle in your life. Now, you said that you had battled with addictions, uh, food addictions, and I don't know what the other addictions were, but have you ever gone through any kind of coaching to help work you through and accountability to help you work through and be free from this cycle of disappointment, this cycle of self-hate? I have done some coaching, but I it was not very effective, mm-hmm. and it was very expensive. So. Mm-hmm. And of course, you didn't get to the root. One on one, yes, but it it wasn't as effective as I had liked. Yeah, yeah. Or hoped. Yeah. Wow. You know, I I dealt with the same thing. When we have a belief, and again, it's a lie that we believe. And if the lie says we're not good enough, we're not perfect enough, we're not thin enough, we have created this city in our head, for example, that has graffiti all over it that speaks the same lie to us. And as we do that, we create a life that proves it to us. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Coming up next, Danny helps Linda confront and beat the cycle of defeat in her life. And it might be the answer you've been looking for. I just heard this amazing story. One of our clients had written us telling us that they had used job domination and unlimited success and has absolutely exploded their career. He said, Danny, I don't know where I'd be today without job domination and unlimited success. Listen, do you want more recognition from your coworkers? Do you want to be recommended to people all over the world? Do you want to be somebody that is highly sought after? Listen, if you're in a dead-end place where this gentleman found himself but then learned new strategies and changed everything in his work life, and obviously this has resulted in higher bonuses and pay raises, you're next. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Job Domination right now. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880, job domination. That's what you need. It's time for you to dominate the job market and break through the rut that you're in. This is The Danny Johnson Show. I used to have this lie in my head that said I was fat. Where'd the lie come from? My dad, uh, the man that raised me, who I thought was my father, but he wasn't my blood father, but he's the man that raised me. And he would say that I was fat. And I was not, but boy, did I believe him. In fact, I had a weight problem for four years. I gained and lost 50 pounds four times from 18 to 22 without being pregnant. In fact, these were after pregnancies that I had gained all that weight. And why? I had a tape in my head. I had graffiti in my head, trash in my head that said I was fat. Joining me right now is Linda who finds herself in a very same situation, but not just the fat tape, but she also has the I'm not worthy tape, I'm not good enough tape, I'm not perfect enough, therefore I'm not lovable. And she feels like she's passing this on to her daughter as well. Linda, I, I wanna encourage you strongly that if you begin to work on yourself in the same way that I began to work on myself, there is healing and redemption and freedom from this kind of thinking. And I know that you said, I've done this for 30 years. I don't want to do this anymore. And now you're seeing the fruit that's in your baby, which then brings on more guilt and shame, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Doesn't it? More guilt, more shame. Now you feel like I'm I'm a failure as a mother. I'm a total loser. What's the point? Eventually, I want you to tell me, eventually, this cycle of disappointment in oneself, the cycle of hatred towards self, where does this eventually lead to? Destructive behavior. Yeah. And what else? What's What would you say the end of the road is? It's basically giving up. Yep. It's either give up or change really fast. Not really fast because I want what I want when I want it. Yep. But getting out of myself and giving up the control. Yep. Yep. So I, I'm going to... I'm going to... Um, advise a couple of things for you. And you can do them if you choose to, but I know that they're going to work. I can't tell you how many people I've seen completely healed, set free, and delivered. 
Number one, I know that there's anxiety in you also. It's a fear of failing, the fear of confirming the cycle of beliefs. We got to attack those beliefs. You have to attack them and you have to replace them with new beliefs. And you, one by one, you got to take these things down. And one, one thing that is the great start to do it is to forgive your mom and dad. You know, they grew up in a generation that did not show a lot of love or affection. And uh, unfortunately, that has hurt a, a whole generation. Our generation, it has hurt uh, tremendously, which out of our generation, our parents, uh, you know, turned into drug addicts because their parents didn't show a lot of a lo love and affection. So now it's, I want love. and I'm going to get it from wherever I want it. And there was lots of rebellion and lots of drugs, lots of trying to hide our emotions, lots of uh, covering up the, the voids that were in our lives. And then that produced your and my generation who... Uh, yeah, has all kinds of anxiety and fear and we're numbed out and we are distracted and, and we just feel like we're producing nothing. That's, that's the fruit of just two generations of doing something that wasn't necessarily wise. I don't think any parent wakes up and says, how can I screw up my kid? I, I really believe that that doesn't exist. However, we have a tendency of passing on bad habits to the next generation, which then can screw up the kid. But I believe you as a mother, Linda, that you will be the one that's going to break the cycle. I believe that you love your daughter enough to change some limiting beliefs that you have, to go after these lies in which have been planted inside your head since you were a little girl, that you have acted out these lies instead of coming to the revelation that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully made, meaning you were well thought of and about when you were knitted together in your mother's womb. And that there is a father in heaven who adores you. He approves of you. He knows all of your faults and he knows all of your strengths. He knows every single freckle that is on your body. He knows every single hair that is numbered on your head. And when he created you, he stepped away, he looked and he said, behold, this is one in whom I'm well pleased. Wow, she takes my breath away. Just as the same as when you looked at your little girl for the very first time when she was delivered from your womb. You want the very best for your little girl. Your creator wants the very best for you. What we've done is we have exalted the thoughts and the words of man higher than the thoughts and the words of Almighty God, the creator who created you and has a plan for your life. We have to break the ties, the emotional pain by forgiving those that did not, that we feel did not give us what we needed at that time. Your parents grew up in a different time. They did the best that they could. They probably did the same thing that was done to them. It doesn't make it right, but I know that they loved you even though it didn't feel like they loved you. I want you to stop calling yourself the black sheep of the family. I want you to stop rehearsing the things that they spoke over you. And I want you to break them with the power of forgiveness. And I want you to train your brain about the identity that you have in the, in the God who created you as well as brought forth the Messiah to die on a cross to cover you of all of your sins and all of your mistakes. And as you surrender fully to God and you ask him to show you who you are, and for you to be able to walk in that, ask him daily to heal you and to guide you to places and people that can help be an instrument for that healing. And I promise you, as you allow yourself to be surrendered and begin to believe through the same repetition, it was through repetition that you were criticized and condemned by the family. It'll be the same repetition that you are going to be built up, edified and encouraged. So it's just, it's just words. That's all it is. So what we put into this mind is exactly what we get out. And Linda, if you do not have this yet, if you don't have a copy of First Steps to Wealth, I want to give you a copy right now. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And I'm going to give it to you for free. You can download it right now if you call 866 760-8255 and you can beginning you can begin reading page one and then page two and then page three and I want you to hear exactly step by step how I was able to break these particular things again 866-760-8255 if you want the physical copy you can pay the shipping and handling to get it to your house and I'll give you the $15 book but uh, if you don't care about the physical copy you can get the ebook right now call 866-760-8255 get it right now begin 
begin to start reading, begin to pray, and allow God to heal you from the inside out. Okay, we've also got Echo Royal from New Bern, North Carolina. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, Danny. Thank you so much for taking my call. Love your name. Thank you. So, I see you have huge plans and you seem to get stuck. Yes, very much so. And what do you get stuck in? I'm not sure if it's procrastination or Mm self-sabotage. I have a list of things I want to do and I get sidetracked. The reality is... Don't even get to the list. Yes. Yes. And so everything starts with habits. And I don't know if this will be helpful to you or not, but this is what I have to do. I have to keep my cell phone in a different room when I go to bed at night. And let me tell you why. I have to put, I have to hedge the success that I want and I have to hedge the plan that I want by setting myself up for success. And for example, a cell phone that has access to email or has access to social media, that has access to text messaging, uh, that has access to pictures, whatever it is that from that device that is distracting, keep the devices out and away from you when you go to bed at night and when you wake up in the morning. Don't go to it first thing. So that now you are gonna decide How am I going to start this day? And you start it according to what you want. When we continue back from the break, I'm going to tell you how I start my day to keep myself on track. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Don't go away. The next segment might just change your life. It's the Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. This is The Danny Johnson Show. It's so true, isn't it? I mean, you wake up in the morning, your head is already going just a thousand miles an hour and and it gets busy. And there's something that I have found in today's world with technology, gosh, there's more distractions than ever, than ever. It's shocking how much so many things can pull on you. It used to be, it was just my kids, but now it's this device, you know, or in devices, you know, whether it's an iPad, your iPhone or your, or your computer, these devices that we have somehow made a little too personal into our personal lives where we take it into the bathroom with us, it sleeps next to us at our bedside. My recommendation is if you want to start your day on purpose, don't start your day with a device anywhere near you. I keep my device in my home office. It plugs in over there, it stays there, and I don't touch it until it is until I'm done doing the things that are really important for me to start my day. For me, starting my day in peace sets me up for a much better day. What does that relate to? I start with reading wisdom. First thing in the morning, I start with wisdom. From the wisdom that I'm reading, then my face is on the floor praying and crying out to my God and praising Him for giving me another day. Praising Him for, for creating the heavens and the earth and parting the Red Sea and bringing the Messiah who died on the cross for my sins. I bring before Him, after I'm done praising Him, a list of petitions. But only after I am saying with my own mouth how big He is, how awesome He is, and all the great things that He's done throughout my life, all the miracles that He has brought. It's because as I build Him up, with my mouth and with my heart to myself, you know what? Then it shows me how small the list of petitions it is that I have. My faith is encouraged and I'm starting my day with peace and faith and I'm starting it with Him and asking Him to bless my day, asking Him to lead me by His Spirit that day, that I would be wise, that I would make wise choices, that I would have wise responses. So, And you know, 100% of the time I don't bat 100%. But I know this, when I don't start my day like that, I ain't batting nothing. I mess up the whole entire day when I start it with this. You know, I gotta check this email, I gotta do this, I gotta make this post, I gotta, oh my gosh. Then you're running throughout the day and now all you've done is open up the door to all kinds of stress and now you're distracted and you're unfocused and you're not being able to get a lot done. So to me, the answer for busyness is to start with production. 
Don't start with distractions. Start with production and get those things done. And then you pretty much build a muscle that will strengthen you from days moving ahead to continue to stay strong. One of the things that I do uh, also in the morning after I'm done with those other two things is I check this page for kingsransom.org to see where the project is. We want, we want to build a thousand homes. So that's in the focus of me. Building a thousand homes for the extreme poor. People who can't put food on the table. They don't have homes. They literally like homeless. They're living in shacks. You know, there, there's no water. There's no food. There's no electricity. The thing is a mess, my friend. And, and here, when I see that, it makes me so grateful for what I have, but in turn also puts a passion in me to help these people. I'd love for you to help us. If you go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, we're building 1,000 homes for the extreme poor. And it only costs $5,200 to build a home for them. Kingsransom.org. You and a group of friends could pull together $5,200. Your kid's third grade can pull together $3,200 to help provide a home for a family like Autolis, who's a single mom who can't feed her kids. Kingsransom.org. Again, that's kingsransom.org. Click on Santa Pancha. That's it for us for today. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll talk to you tomorrow with another exciting topic that's going to help you have greater success. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. If you want to hear more, visit us at dannyjohnson.com. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're going to make sure that you get awesome videos for your business, career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home as well as at work and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing community of people as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.